Are you actually dressed up for this? Look at the light. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Hello. Today, I would like to talk about God's restoration business. Uh, this is actually the second time I've made this video. It got deleted. So, hopefully I remember everything I said in the original, but here we go. <coughs> Several months ago, I was really struggling and I wrote something down in my notes on my phone. All I put was, God's not in the moving business, he's in the restoration business. I feel like a lot of times when you have sin or shame in your past, you kind of want God to just remove it all. And we know that he doesn't remember our sins, but we do. People around us do. People involved do. People who have heard about it do. And I feel like a lot of times we just kind of wish that we could go on pretending it never happened and just move through life like nothing has ever changed. But that's not healthy um, at all. <laughs> and I feel like God just really wants us to know that he is not here to remove everything. He wants to restore us. He wants to turn that ugliness into something beautiful. And he's doing that in my life. I see that all the time. And I'm really happy and excited to see what else he has in store. So uh, the first scripture we're going to look at is Isaiah 58, 12. I found this verse on accident. It was completely... God pointed me to it and that actually kind of inspired me to actually make this video. I was looking in Isaiah chapter 58 about fasting and I read the whole chapter and got down to verse 12. Some of you will rebuild the desert ruins of your cities. Then you will be known as a rebuilder of walls and a restorer of homes. I love this verse so much. Just that first line, some of you will rebuild the desert ruins of your cities. That is so comforting to me that God doesn't want us to just pick up and move and act like nothing ever happened. He wants to rebuild. He wants us to give it all to him so he can turn it into something. It shouldn't stop at asking for forgiveness or repenting. We should ask him, what do you want to do with this? What, what can I do with this experience, even, even though it was bad, good can come of it. Proverbs 16, 4, the Lord has made everything for his own purposes, even the wicked for a day of disaster. So even though maybe you have some pretty nasty stuff in your past, he's going to use it. The problem is, is it's easy to get confused on um, people thinking that God brought evil things into their life. I don't think that at all. I think every move that God makes is for good. And I think sometimes he allows us to go through something bad. That way we can grow from it and we can get that experience. There's some things in my past that I did that I never thought I would do. And now I have such a deep compassion for people who are going through that because now I get it. I understand how they got there and how easy it is to get warped in your head that whatever you're doing is okay. Hi, really quick. It is like two days after making this video, but I just had to add this in um, because it is right on par with the things that I'm saying. I just uh, was watching a sermon and came across this verse, 1 Corinthians 5.5. 5. Um, Paul is speaking. I'm not sure the context, but... <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I don't know what happened, but just this little bit is amazing. 1 Corinthians 5.5 5. You are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. It, it goes right back to what I was saying about sometimes God allows bad things to happen to make good out of it. In this, God is literally saying in his word, in the Bible, he's literally saying, sometimes I will allow you to be delivered to Satan, but it is going to be for your good. As soon as I heard this verse, I just, I saw my own life and me constantly fulfilling my flesh and what I wanted until finally I got tired of it. 
it's exhausting, it's not fulfilling, it's not satisfying. It, momentary pleasure does not mean anything when you're constantly just saying no to God and saying yes to yourself. So eventually I got sick of it. That's what I'm doing now is with God's help, I'm destroying my flesh. God is destroying my flesh. And that way my spirit is saved in the day of the Lord. And I just had to share that because it's so good. I love that Satan probably thinks that he is going to win this. He probably thinks he has this all figured out and he is going to screw you over and mess you up for the rest of your life. And God is like, whoa, not going to happen, man. Because what you're doing, all part of my plan. And that is so amazing. And I'm not going to cry about it, but it's so good. Whenever I, I think of God allowing something horrible for good, I think of Job. And I, I've always loved the story of Job. The devil came to God and asked him, Hey, can I mess with your man, Job? And God said, yeah because I know he's not going to leave me. And in the end, after everything that D Job went through, because he trusted God through all of it and was eager to see how God was going to use it, in the end, he ended up with more than what he had in the beginning, more than what he lost. And that that's a part of restoration. It's turning, turning something that's broken or worn down or damaged or maybe even missing. It's turning that into something new that's usable and good and there's so many other good words that I can't think of. Romans 8.28, song by Lecrae 8.28, it's from this scripture. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. That just goes back hand in hand with the other verse. This is a New Testament verse confirming an Old Testament verse. It's going to work out. And I know, I know how hard it is to see that, to trust him in the middle of the worst things that you've ever gone through. And God knows that I have failed at that time and time again. But as I'm coming into this new season in my life, things are uncertain. There's two big things going on that I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. But I know that if I just trust him and rely on him through it all no matter what it is going to work out for his purpose and his good and his glory and that's the exciting thing the bible says as christians we are going to be persecuted it's easy to look at people who aren't going through bad things that aren't believers and be like well it's so easy for them why am i going through all this whenever i do believe in god and i trust in him it's the enemy attacking and the great thing about trusting in god is that he can use that. He can make it something beautiful. He can restore whatever the enemy takes away. He can restore whatever pain that you have in your heart. And the last verse is Genesis 50, 20. So I've, I think I've maybe have said it before, but all year this year, the story of Joseph, it has come up time and time again. And just the point has been made how he had a dream. In the beginning, his dream was that he was going to be a leader one day and he was excited about that but it, his path to getting there was not how he thought it would be his brother sold him into slavery he was thrown into prison because he's accused by potiphar's wife all of these things happened to him but through it all he trusted god and he still ended up there he went through the pit and he still ended up where god wanted him to be and he ended up so strong for it. Let's look at how he was. Genesis 50, 20. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. So here he is finally reunited with his brothers who betrayed him. And they're scared. They think that he's going to have them killed because of what they did to him. But he's he is so secure in his faith. He's so secure in knowing that God worked it out for good that he's like, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter what you did to me in the past because look at where I am now. Look at what God used through that. God saved through Joseph generations of Egyptians and Jews because of the famine that was coming. So if you're going through something bad or if you have went through something bad, don't give up. 
God can restore you and he will use it beautifully. And it is, it is going to be so amazing. And I'm excited to see what he does in my life. And I'm excited to see what he does in yours. I've got to end this because I'm sitting on my feet and my feet are falling asleep. <laughs> I finally came up with a possibly good outro. Um, when I was growing up, every time we'd leave the house, my dad would always say, make good choices. So that is what I'm going to say to you. I hope you'd enjoy this video. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Share it with anybody that you think may need this. I hope you got something from it. Make good choices out there. Crap. I didn't know what burden of I'm recording. Will you turn off? What? Oh no.